A maid Mrs. Kate is looking for Oz so she can prepare him for that night's coming of age ceremony. A young boy Oz and his little sister Ada are hiding a closet. Mrs. Kate asks Gil if he's seen Oz, but Gil misleads them and sends them away. He tells Oz he can come out now. As they head outside, Oscar suddenly captures them and talks with them about that night's ceremony. Oscar jokingly warns Oz that if he misbehaves, he'll set a chain on him. Oz laughs and replies that the threat wore off ages ago. Gil tells Ada that the abyss is a place for bad people. They can never return and are dragged in by chains. Oz replies, though, that it is only a legend. Oz hands Gil a robe that he wants Gil to wear in that night's ceremony. Gil tells that he mustn't since he's only a servant. Oz insists, saying they're friends. A melody suddenly starts playing as they follow it. Gil and Oz fall through a hole in the ground and discover an underground graveyard. Oz picks up the pocket watch that is on the grave. He is instantaneously transported to a room filled with toys. They laugh and announce that she will be pleased that he has returned. A young girl appears and says she is glad that he has come back. Oz is shocked, stating that he has never been there before, but the girl insists that they know each other. As fire suddenly erupts all around him, the girl grabs his throat and says she's going to kill him. Gil suddenly shakes Oz and he returns to normal. He closes the watch and they head back. As he gets ready, he recalls what happened. Hand marks are shown around his neck. Simultaneously, a masked person takes Gil's robe and starts controlling him. A young girl, sitting alone in the darkness, suddenly hears the melody. She wonders if his calling to her. Oz meets Sharon with whom he is instantly infatuated. He asks her if she's participating but she says she can't because she is still 13. A young man named Brait with a red eye and a doll on his shoulder escorts her out. He teases her about Oz but she replies that Oz will probably be working more closely with Brake in the future. Oscar starts the ceremony. Oz remembers he forgot to ask him about the watch. A masked man outside the mansion says that the countdown has begun. As Oz climbs the stairs to take his vows, the clock which had been silent for a hundred years suddenly starts working again. The masked men claim he is the person in the prophecy. Oz is shocked by what's happening. A controlled Gil suddenly grabs Oz and stabs him. The men use his blunt to open the path to the abyss. Oz begs Gil to stop Gil is thrown aside as Bee Rabbit emerges. She claims Oz is her property and addresses the Shinigami as a fight ensues. After she defeats them all, she asks them why they're planning to send Oz to the abyss. Oz is still in shock. Gil, who has recovered, asks one of the men why they're doing this to Oz. He suddenly gasps as he recognizes one of the men. Oz picks up a sword and rushes towards the masked man. Gil tells him to stop, but Oz doesn't and accidentally slashes Gil across the chest. Shaking, Oz drops the sword. Weakened physically and emotionally, a man holds him as another states that he's being punished for the sin of existing. The black wings drag a screaming Oz into the abyss. Later, Brake is seen drinking tea in a ruined manner. Sharon states that this is the Rainsworth family's mission to rescue Oz. A young man in black is seen sitting on the side as well. Oz explores a little bit and discovers the place is like a broken toy box. He also finds out the place looks the same no matter where he goes. Some dolls attack him before the black rabbit arrives and saves him once again. The rabbit tells him to call her Alice. Hearing her name, he feels nostalgic. She says that Oz is required to make a contract with her in order to leave the abyss and unleash her full power. She goes on to say they should join forces since they have the same goal. Suddenly, Sharon appears and takes Oz away. She tells him not to trust Alice. Oz eventually realizes something isn't right, and the chain mad baby reveals himself. Alice rescues Oz, he wonders why she is doing this. Alice replies that she is just following her heart's instincts. She gets caught and starts to get consumed. Before she does, she tells Oz to get out. However, Oz attacks Mad Baby, wondering why he is doing this for her. He realizes he doesn't want to lose her. Desperately, he asks her to form a contract with him. Her eyes light up immediately. Once she forms the contract, she enters his body and possesses him, exultant that she finally can escape the abyss. Sharon and Raven are preparing to enter the abyss. Suddenly, Break grabs Sharon and pulls her aside as Oz returns to the real world. Sharon remarks that he is the key of the tragedy there is no going back, even if Oz turns out to be a fallen angel of destruction. Oz wakes up to see Raven, Sharon, and Brake. Upon seeing Raven, Oz calls him Gil. Raven's appearance is similar to that of Gilbert, having black hair and golden eyes. Brake and Sharon welcome him. However, Oz recalls the events of the Abyss and claims he won't be tricked again. Brake assures him that he has escaped. Oz immediately asks about his family. Brake reassures him that everyone is safe. He introduces himself as a loyal servant of the Rainsworth household. Brake explains to Oz about Pandora, an organization whose objective is to find out anything they can about the Abyss. He also talks about the residents of Baskerville, their enemies. 
and their main goal. Tunnels from the abyss can be used by chains to escape, to acquire a real existence. They form illegal contracts with humans. They tell Oz they're taking him back to Pandora for further investigation. Rake ties up his hands, stating anything can happen. Alice then possesses Oz and takes Sharon hostage in order to escape, but Brake stops her by forcing her from Oz's body. Alice states that she has come to this world to find her memories which were scattered here. Rake exclaims that he will have to kill Alice and is surprised she isn't in her true be rabbit form. Oz's pocket watch then starts to act strangely. Raven comments that the door to the abyss had opened and a chain escaped. By using Raven's powers, Raven was able to control the bee rabbit's powers from within Oz. Rake decides to test Alice's power, and Alice willingly agrees. With this power, Alice releases her full form and defeats the chain. After the door was closed, Alice found out why it had reacted to her. The music lured her to the watch because it contained one of her memory shards. The entire group is shown Oz's vision. A second young man, Jack, appears in front of Oz. He instructs him to recover all the fragments of Alice's memories, then he will find the answers he is looking for. Alice cries in relief after receiving one of her memories. Nevertheless, she immediately reverts to her former self as she talks to Brake. He asks them to become his subordinates since they have the same goals. Both of them agree. Brake gives Oz, Alice, and Raven their first mission. They are sent to a nearby town, the Sambria, in search of an illegal contractor. In the marketplace, Alice goes missing, and Raven goes to look for her. Alone, Oz sees a young girl selling flowers. When the trio have dinner, Oz realizes Raven's other personality reminds him of Gil. Raven then informs Oz of why people become illegal contractors, to obtain power to change the past, present, or future. They lure humans with their promise and a seal forms on their bodies. However, there is a time limit. As Alice falls asleep, Raven and Oz leave to finish their mission. Alice is soon awakened by an attack by a chain, whose contractor turns out to be the girl that was selling flowers. As Raven shoots the chain, the girl's clock seal makes a full rotation. The flower girl awakens as if from a trance, wondering what's going on. The abyss opens, and her chain grabs her as they both get drawn in. Oz rushes to save her, but is restrained by Raven to stop him from being dragged down into the abyss again. On the ride home, Alice claims she never knew about any of this. Raven can't believe she has never eaten a human before. Alice states this is her first contract, and she wants to find a way to help Oz. Raven informs them that the only way to stop Oz from being dragged into the abyss when his clock makes a full rotation is to kill Alice, which initiates an argument between Alice and Raven. We see a death god laughing inside the Vesalius mansion. Brake looks at the seal on Oz's left shoulder. Since it hasn't started to move, Brake says he should be alright. Oz decides that they should continue the search for Alice's memories. Since the pocket watch contained a memory, he decides the mansion where he had the coming of age ceremony is a good place to start. When they arrive at the mansion, it appears deserted and worn down, unlike the rich, glorious mansion as Oz remembers. Since there is a little trouble, Raven says he's going in alone, and Oz and Alice should wait outside. Alice and Oz suddenly sense an evil presence. They both rush toward the mansion to help Raven. Inside, Sway has taken control of Pandora's staff. Raven shoots them down one by one. Sway comments that he's grown into a very cruel adult. She taunts him, asking if he's still angry that she used his body to hurt Oz ten years ago. He shouts back that he will never forgive her and keeps firing. Having heard everything, Oz enters the room. Sway says she and her chain Dolden want to celebrate his return. She states that even if one does escape from the abyss, it's impossible to return to the same time. Oz slowly realizes that Raven is Gil. Gil, once again controlled by Zwei, attacks Oz. The mysterious woman says Oz is the key for obtaining the will of the abyss. As they fight, Oz sees the scar on Gil's chest from the woo he gave him ten years ago. He gives up and states it's better for him to die. Gil is shocked as Oz smiles and pulls the trigger. Gil shoots Zwei in the shoulder, breaking Duldum's threads. She retreats, stating she looks forward to the next stage. Gil is shocked that Oz really wanted to die. Oz replies he knew that Gil would never hurt him. Meanwhile, Alice is talking with the Will of the Abyss. As Oz and Alice walk through the garden, one of Alice's memories appears. A little girl holding a white rabbit is seen running towards a young man in a green coat with braided long blonde hair. Although his face is unclear, he warns them that they should be careful, since they're being watched by the will of the abyss. The memory space starts to collapse. Gil protects Oz, but Alice is captured. Oz insists that Alice should be released, but the will of the abyss, in the shape of a stuffed rabbit, says that Alice is just a chain. She knows nothing about herself and would be better off dead. Gil and Oz defeat her. She leaves, saying they will regret choosing Alice over her. The three of them return to the garden unconscious. Rake can't believe that the will of the abyss interfered, but Sharon replies that everything was within their calculations. 
A young white-haired girl, the intention of the abyss, wearing a white dress, is sitting alone in a room. She wants someone to hurry. Oz wakes up in Gilbert's house in the capital city. Gil informs him that Brake used them as bait to drive the wool of the abyss. Brake talks to Oz and Alice regarding the topic of chains and why he and Sharon had not aged. Since they are legal contractors, they do not age although Brake comments that he will not last longer than a year. The abyss is the birthplace of chains and Ozzy's existence is the key for capturing the wool of the abyss. He says that the abyss is malfunctioning, and they need Oz to set it right. Oz, however, insists that finding Alice's memories is his top priority. Brake then comments that although he can see Oz, he cannot see his presence. Alice laughs and says that Oz is right here. Hearing her answer, Brake leaves through a closet. As Gil and Alice look for him, Oz leaves the room. He falls to the floor as his seal takes its first turn. On a rooftop, Brake announces that the countdown has begun. A young girl in blue comes into the house and drops a letter in Vincent's name. Gil reads the letter, although he doesn't tell the others about it. In the market, Alice again runs off and Gil goes to find her. At the same time, Oz sees a group of boys bullying a child named Philip and saves him. As the sun sets, the young girl in blue is seen overlooking the rooftops. Alice tells Gil that she smells a chain nearby. The blue dress girl appears in front of Oz, she introduces herself as Echo, a loyal servant of the Nitrae family. Meanwhile, Brake returns to the Rainsworth mansion where Sharon and Pandora member, Raym, are having a discussion. He explains that Grimm and his illegal contractor escaped their grasp, killing six guards in the process. Emily and Brake tease Raym, but Brake quickly remarks to Sharon that things are about to become interesting since the chain have returned to the capital city where Alice, Oz, and Gil are. Echo tells Oz not to interfere since she will do anything to fulfill her mission, capturing the illegal contractor. As she pushes Oz aside, he drops Gil's hat. Recognizing it, she asks Oz what his connection is to Gilbert. He insists that he's Gil's savior. She replies that Vincent will be upset if she hurts Gil's savior. She gives him permission to follow her, but she will not be responsible if he's involved in the fight and dies. Thinking that Philip is the illegal contractor, Oz chases after Echo. Simultaneously, Gil insists that they should find Oz first. However, Alice says it is too late since the chain has found them. Oz wants to know what Echo will do with Philip, but she replies that Oz is mistaken. The contractor is his father. Grim and Alice acknowledge each other. He says that the will of the abyss will be happy if he eats her. She orders Gil to release her power so she can fight at full strength. He agrees, but since Oz is not there, it's impossible. As they run away, Echo attacks Grim. She is quickly thrown aside as Oz, standing on a bridge, recognizes Philip's father as the contractor. Suddenly, the bridge collapses, but Gil saves Oz. He unleashes the limiter, and Alice transforms into Bee Rabbit. Echo is about to participate as well, but a young man in shoulder-length blonde hair tells her to wait and observe. As the fight ensues, Oz comprehends that the damage inflicted on a chain also affects the contractor. He begs Alice to stop, but she refuses. He realizes he's powerless, but a voice whispers that he can stop and control her. In desperation, Oz releases his own power. Alice returns to normal. The shockwave knocks Gilbert unconscious. Alice can't understand what's going on. The voice laughs lightly, telling Oz he told him he could do it. Oz starts walking toward Philip's father, recalling the promise that he made to Philip that he would definitely bring his father back to him. Philip's father starts shooting wildly at him. Gil recovers and sees Oz in trouble. He draws his gun, but Oz orders him not to shoot. Suddenly, a shot rings out and the man falls to the floor dead. The abyss opens and drags him and his chain in. Oz yells at Gil, telling him why he shot when he ordered him not to. Gil insists that it wasn't him. Vincent suddenly announces that he did since there was nothing more that could have been done for him. At the Rainsworth mansion, Vincent apologizes to Sharon for the disturbance. She replies it's no trouble at all, but Vincent insists that he'll be leaving since he doesn't feel welcome here. Brake agrees to escort him out. As Brake escorts Vincent and Echo out, he remarks that he believes someone helped Grimm escape. Then that someone conveniently took care of him but claiming that he was killed to save Oz. Vincent replies that will truly be scary since it proves the existence of a traitor. Rake remarks that he will definitely corner that traitor. Vince states that he'll look forward to it. While Alice and Oz are talking, she reveals that Vincent gives her a bad feeling although she is not sure why. Gilbert states that he is his younger brother. He starts to tell them everything. He was adopted by the Nitrae family so he could obtain their chain raven. Rake starts speaking to Gil. He asks him to become a member of the Nitrae's. Gil replies that this is impossible since the Nitrae's and the Vesalius are sworn enemies. Emily remarks that although it would be a betrayal, he would be able to save Oz. Rake explains he wants Gil to reveal all the Nitrae's plans and movements to him. He says that Gil doesn't have to trust him. They should just use each other. Gil is brought to the Nitrae mansion. There he meets Vincent and they start a new life. 
One day, he asks Vincent about Raven. Although Vincent is surprised that Gil knows about Raven, he takes Gil to the door to the abyss underneath the Nitre mansion. He explains how each of the four great houses, Nitre, Vesalius, Rainsworth, and Barma possess doors to the abyss and the chains that are connected to them. By forming legal contracts, it is possible to create a path to the abyss. Raven suddenly materializes, Gil is frightened, but Vincent assures him that he'll be able to obtain its power. Gil realizes that it's possible to save Oz. When Gil finishes his story, he sees that Alice and Oz have both fallen asleep. Uncle Oscar comes to see them, but he decides wait until tomorrow and gives some papers to break. In the morning, Break tells Oscar that the trio has gone to the market. Oscar asks him about what he's planning. Break replies that his prey is about to bite the bait. In the market, Gil and Oz both reunite with Uncle Oscar. Seeing them together, Alice runs away. As she wonders why she's behaving like this, she suddenly hears a bell ringing. Break appears as well when she asks him why he's here, he replies that she should pay more attention to the surroundings, since he has been following them for some time. When Oz looks for her, he sees Emily and a bag of apples on the ground. Alice remembers how she's always looking for him, a young man in a green coat. She doesn't want to be alone. Break replies that he agrees. He informs her that they have been dragged into a cat's house. He tells her that she should stay alert because this cat didn't bring them here to be friends. Break says that he wants to get the truth from this cat. When they enter another room, a memory surrounds Alice. The Will of the Abyss asks her why she wants her memories back. She replies she needs to know why she exists. Break is unable to calm her, and Alice runs off screaming. When he's about to go after her, someone grabs him and drags him into a mirror. At the Rainsworth Mansion, Sharon explains to Oz and Gil that Break and Alice are in a cat's house. Oz comments that Break wouldn't have gone there without planning an escape route. He deliberately left Emily behind to tell Oz and Gil to hurry up and join the fun. Sharon reveals that her chain Equus is hidden in Break's shadow. They can use it to reach Break and Alice. A scared Alice is running through the halls when a black cat appears in front of her. She remembers that it was her dear friend. Gil and Oz wake up in Cheshire's dimension. Sharon's voice tells them that something has happened to Alice and Break. She instructs them to look for Alice first since Break won't die so easily. Cheshire suddenly shows himself. He states that they're enemies of the will of the abyss and he will eliminate them. Gil freezes up when he sees him because of his cat phobia. Sharon uses Aquis to hold off Cheshire, giving them a chance to escape. Simultaneously, Echo appears behind Sharon in the real world and she gasps in surprise at her sudden appearance. A fake Alice appears in front of them but Gil shoots it down. Cheshire suddenly reappears, he explains that it's a distorted memory. If they're swallowed by this place which has been created by the memories, they will suffer. He states it would be better if he ate them right here. When he smells Gil, he realizes that Raven's power is being used to control Alice. He slashes Gil across the chest, and he falls at the stairs rails. Cheshire grabs Oz, asking him why he came here. Oz replies that Alice wants to get her memories back. Cheshire screams back that he's a liar because Alice wants to forget. That's why she herself scattered her memories the day she discovered the truth. Back at Pandora headquarters, Oscar and Raim talk about how the meeting has been postponed. They find Vincent sleeping on the floor in the middle of the hall. His chain dormouse sometimes puts him to sleep as well. Vincent explains how Echo is out doing another job for him. He adds he will not tell anyone about Ozzy's return. Raim can't believe it, but he's quickly sworn to secrecy. Meanwhile, Gil is walking through a garden. He suddenly sees Alice's memory and follows her. He recalls the conversation he had with Brake, how she's just a leech who's preying on Oz, and it would be better to kill her. He adds that she doesn't even look like other chains, so something strange is going on. Brake says that he's not allowed to kill her yet since she may be completely different from other chains. The young, blonde-haired man in the green coat suddenly calls out to Gil, whom Gil mistakes for Oz as they both have blonde hair and emerald green eyes. The man reveals his name to be Jack Vesalius. Cheshire Cat is toying with Oz, who responds by making wisecracks. Cheshire comments how he's there, but also not there. Jack suddenly appears and Oz is pulled through the mirror. Jack tells Cheshire that Alice will be upset if anything happens to Oz. Oz is reunited with Gil. After their reunion, Oz insists that Jack tells them who he really is. Before that, Jack asks Oz to help save Alice, who has been trapped inside a memory. Meanwhile, Cheshire enters a memory, which is a world created by Brake. Jack explains that Brake can handle himself against Cheshire. Jack sends Oz by himself, upsetting Gil. He'll ask him why he did this. Jack explains that his power is limited since he is only a fragment in Alice's memory. Meanwhile, Cheshire approaches Break within the mirror to finish him off. Only to have the tables turned when Break opens his missing eye to unleash his chain, a Mad Hatter. He reveals he intentionally allowed himself to get caught so he could defeat him. Oz continues to search for Alice. Flames and dead bodies suddenly appear all around him. 
Jack reveals that he has sent Oz into the memory of the tragedy of Sabri, where he sees a boy which he believes to be Vincent. He chases the boy and realizes that Gil must also have lived 100 years ago. He follows him to a tower where he finds Alice dead. Jack reveals that Alice was murdered here as a human 100 years ago. Gilbert points his gun at Jack and insists to send him to Oz right away. After seeing a murdered Alice, Oz is devastated. Because of his shock, the hand of Oz in Cuse moves again, and he begins to destroy Cheshire's dimension using B-Rabbit's power. During that time, Jack sends Gil to help Oz. If Gil cannot stop him, the entire dimension will be destroyed and everyone trapped in it will disappear. Meanwhile, Break and Cheshire continue their fight. Cheshire insists he has to kill Oz before he destroys this place. He lives and does everything for Alice. Gil catches up to Oz and is unable to make him come to his senses. Oz remembers Alice's sad voice and her suffering. To save her, he decides to destroy everything. To make him snap out of it, Gil slaps him. Vincent is seen playing chess with Echo in the background. He states everything is going according to plan. Back in the dimension, Break overpowers Cheshire using Mad Hatter. Break takes the truth of the tragedy of Sabri and Alice's memories in the form of Cheshire's bell. Oz realizes that he came to Cheshire's dimension to save Alice, he and Gil find her in chains on a staircase contemplating about herself. As Oz climbs the stairs, he tells Alice that it doesn't matter if she's human or a chain, being Alice is fine and saves her. As both of them fall, they are caught by Gil. Cheshire and Brake suddenly break into the room. Brake reveals that he transformed into a monster and will destroy everything to protect Alice. He orders them to escape using Equus. As Cheshire's voice echoes after he is defeated, Alice realizes that Cheshire was once her pet cat. Brake and Gil get separated from Oz and Alice and are left in Cheshire's dimension. Equus brings Oz and Alice back to their world, but they are transported directly into a room full of people. Oz realizes they have interrupted a Pandora meeting with Uncle Oscar involved and Alice is in her B-Rabbit form. Everyone there thinks that they mean to harm the four dukes and chase them. Ray enters and Oscar instructs him to handle the situation. Ray wonders where he can hide such a huge rabbit, and is suddenly pulled into a room by Brake. Rake and Gil got back safely by using Gil's chain, Raven. Rake immediately asks what happened to Sharon. Raim states that right now she is missing, but remembers he has to find Oz and Alice and runs out of the room. Seeing Black Rose and a Black Knight, Brake understands that Vincent Nitre has taken Sharon. Gil wakes up and wants to find Oz so he can seal B-Rabbit before Oz's body is destroyed any further. Later, when Oz and Alice are cornered, Jack Vesalius takes over Oz's body. He returns Alice to normal and the stewards of the nobles are shocked to see young girl. Jack speaks to Pandora, claiming that Glenn Baskerville is not dead, and he is the one who defeated Glenn 100 years ago. He goes on to say that Oz is not the enemy, but the key to saving them from the repeat of the tragedy of Sibri. He explains that Glenn sacrificed thousands to try and obtain the will of the Abyss, and he and his followers will not hesitate to do it again once they are reunited. The scene switches to Brake and Vincent. Brake insists that Vincent returns Sharon at once. Vincent agrees, but only once Brake will return the Cheshire's Bell. Later, Vincent meets with some of the Baskervilles. Oz finds out about Sharon's kidnapping and that Brake resolved the situation. Oscar receives a letter from Ada, and they go to meet her. The meeting was awkward as both didn't know whether the other would remember them or accept how they are now. Suddenly, Oz runs up the stairs after he hears the melody from his pocket watch being played. Ada suggests that it must be Elliot and Leo. Elliot speaks rudely to her since she's a member of the Vesalius family, and he is a nitre. Suddenly, a pink-haired girl grabs Ada. The Baskervilles ask Oz to tell him about himself. The pink-haired girl, Lottie, poisons Ada. She offers Oz the antidote if he lets her talk to Jack. She wants to know the truth about the tragedy of Sabri. They killed a lot of people following Glenn Baskerville's orders. Meanwhile, Elliot sees Ada's cats pawing a wall. Leah realizes that there must be a secret passageway and opens it. When they arrive in the room, Elliot challenges the Baskervilles. Leo picks up Ada, and the four of them escape. He is given the antidote to Ada, and she is recovering. The three Baskervilles are planning how to pursue them. Once they do, they catch up to them, and Lottie uses her chain Leon to attack. Oz and Elliot draw their swords and fight back. Oz calls on Jack for help. He draws on Alice's B-Rabbit power and Kiel and Alice both feel it. Lottie suddenly experiences a flashback. She remembers meeting Jack for the first time. She can't comprehend why Glenn would associate with such a person. One day, Jack shows her the pocket watch that he made, which also plays a melody. Glenn tells her that it's called Lacey. One day, Glenn orders the whole of the clan to start killing everyone in the capital. Jack starts speaking to Lottie through Oz. Lottie accuses him of killing Glenn for the current wealth and status the Vesalius family now enjoys. 
Enraged, Jack asks her if he could really kill his best friend for fame and glory. He ends the conversation, telling her to retreat because they cannot defeat B-Rabbit's power, saying that he just wants to protect his old friend's reputation. In his inner world, Oz sees Jack's past. Jack confronts Glenn, demanding to know why he's caused all the destruction and devastation to Sigri. Glenn turns his bloodied sword on Jack. When he's about to kill him, Jack is forced to kill him instead while crying out in anguish. Oz and company arrive well dressed at an opera house to meet Rufus Barma in order to find out more about the tragedy of Sabri. A tubby old man suddenly appears before them. He refuses to tell them anything unless they exchange some information that he doesn't know. Oz says he wants to know how much he is capable of so he can protect his friends. Duke Barma goes crazy. Giant playing cards suddenly attack Oz and Alice. Break then dispels Barma's illusions using Mad Hatter and confronts the real Rufus Barma, revealing his real intention of finding out more about Break's past. Break then collapses after Rufus calls him out as Kevin Legnard, a person who murdered over 116 people 50 years ago and had previously made an illegal contract. Break remembers how he was dragged into the Abyss. The intention of the Abyss, also known as Alice, suddenly speaks to Break. Break suddenly feels pain and is informed that here in the core of the Abyss, he is being transformed into a chain. Meanwhile, the tragedy of Sabri starts to take place. In the intention of the Abyss's room, Vincent shows up along with Gilbert in his arms. After Vincent collapses, weakened physically and mentally, Alice tells everyone that it's tea time. She says she can't wait for a playdate with Jack. He says Jack will never be coming since he's dead after fighting with Glenn and Sabri. As she screams and cries in agony, the entire dimension starts collapsing. Before he's pulled away as well, Break promises her anything if she'll just make it so his past was changed. Jack mentions how he met a young girl on the Baskerville estate. As he visited her, he noticed that Alice would switch her tastes constantly as if she were a different person. When he finally had the courage to ask who the other one was, she claimed they were twins connected by the core of the Abyss. Break suggested that Oz and Alice work for Pandora under him in order to capture illegal contractors. That night, Gilbert returns to the Nitre estate, believing that asking Vincent about the tragedy of Sabri should be his next move as everything seems to come back to Vincent in the end. Gilbert realizes that Oz and Alice have followed him and are presently standing in front of the Nitre mansion's front doors. Oz leads Alice into the Nitre estate in order to help Gilbert interrogate Vincent. Gilbert finds the mansion filled with nobles. Upon entering the mansion, Oz and Alice are met by Echo. Oz admits that there is something very important that he and Alice need to ask Vincent, but Echo apologizes as she reveals that Vincent is currently unavailable. Oz and Alice leave the Nitre estate. In Vincent's room, Gilbert confronts his brother. Gilbert outright asks Vincent once again to divulge the truth of what happened during the tragedy of Sabri, but Vincent tells he can't remember anything. After Gil leaves, the path opens a portal in an alleyway of Reveil and gleaming crimson eyes peer out from within. Break states that the only other people connected to the tragedy of Sabri who they could ask are Glenn Baskerville and the intention of the Abyss. Oz pulls out Jack's pocket watch, only to get an idea after listening to its melody play. The group returns to the mansion where Oz had found Jack's pocket watch. Elsewhere in the mansion, electricity crackles as another portal opens, this time releasing something into their world. The group splits up to investigate the mansion, and so when Oz and Gilbert make their way to the tomb Oz had discovered, they find Alice sitting before the grave. Oz wonder if the grave belonged to someone. Both Alice and Jack knew. Inside the mansion, Oz asks Gilbert about what he'd seen during the coming of age ceremony and who it was he was trying to defend. Just as Gilbert is about to tell Oz who he defended, a card is thrown through a wall below and killed by Equus. As Sharon enters the room, she tells Oz that there's a situation and that they need to take action right away. Sharon, Gilbert, and Oz rush outside to find numerous cards, one of which is holding Alice. Alice struggles to break free from the lowly chain who doesn't hesitate to try and kill Alice. Before he can succeed in doing so, however, Break slices off the card's arm with his sword and frees Alice. Outraged that cards would dare challenge her, Alice orders Oz to have B-Rabbit's powers released. Alice easily slaughters the cards. After the card's bodies are returned to the Abyss, Break notes that something isn't right, as it's not normal for so many chains to break through to their world without the help of a contractor. An explosion echoes through the area the group finds that in the distance Reveal is burning. Meanwhile, in Revile a chain similar to Mad Baby leads hordes of cards through the streets in pursuit of civilians. Elsewhere, a hedgehog chain rolls into a nearby building, a chain similar to Grimm stands and fires missiles from its hand, toppling a nearby building. At Pandora headquarters, Bernard Nitre is shocked to learn of a mass chain invasion. 
Suddenly, a loud crashing is heard on the other side of the door and numerous chains similar to the flower girl's chain flood through the door. At the bridge at Rivale's city limits, a hedgehog chain pursues the populace as they attempt to flee the city. As the chain prepares to devour its prey, Oz, Alice, Gilbert, Sharon, and Break arrive and Gilbert shoots into the hedgehog chain's mouth. Afterwards, Oz attempts to raise the bridge in order to cut the hedgehog chain off from those who are escaping the fray. Instead, the chain pushes forward and jumps onto the bridge as it raises, prompting Oz to cut the line with an axe, thereby crushing the hedgehog chain under the weight of the bridge as it falls. Just then, a grim forces itself through to the bridge and fires missiles. Alice tells Oz that they need to take action, leading to Gilbert's release of Bee Rabbit's powers. Having grown weak from using her chain so much, Sharon recalls Equus and collapses to the ground. Gilbert rushes over to Sharon's side and asks if she's okay. But instead, Sharon laments on how it doesn't matter how many chains they manage to kill, because they just keep pouring out of the abyss. Break summons Mad Hatter and full over top of Reveal, leading Oz to suggest fleeing the scene because they need to make sure Alice stays as far away from Mad Hatter as possible. As Mad Hatter opens his eye, every single chain in Reveal is destroyed, allowing the city a temporary reprieve from the chain invasion. When Break calls back Mad Hatter, he starts coughing up blood uncontrollably once again before losing consciousness and falling to the ground. Though Oz wants to seek out Gilbert, Sharon, and Break, Alice stays put and insists that the chain invasion isn't over yet. Seemingly out of nowhere, a blizzard erupts over Reveal, and so Oz accepts that their job's not done and instead decides to seek out shelter in order to keep himself and Alice warm until they're needed again. Alice warns Oz that a chain is coming seconds before a Grim thrusts its arm through the floorboards of the house. As the Grim moves to take Alice, Oz dives in front of her and shoots at the chain, allowing them to escape while it's in a daze. With the Grim hot on their tail as they escape the house and Oz's gun left without ammunition, all seems lost. Unexpectedly, Lottie, Doug, and Fang appear before Oz and Alice, with Lottie sending Leon to attack the Grim. Confused, Oz questions the Baskerville's intentions, and so Doug and Fang explain that they're under orders from the lead Baskerville to stop the phenomenon going on with the Abyss and that they'll need to use Oz's power to do so. Though Oz questions what power he could have at the Baskerville's need, he finds himself without an answer as a group of cards makes their way toward them. Elsewhere, Gilbert is still fending off chains while Sharon supports Break. Soon Gilbert runs out of ammo and suggests that they make a hasty retreat, only to find that they're surrounded by cards and a mad baby. Even in the darkness there is light as the reinforcements from Pandora arrive, with thousands of snapdragon flies and rocking horse flies killing the chains assaulting Reveal. Taking their leave, Gilbert carries break while Sharon follows closely behind, soon to reunite with Oz and Alice. Their moment of rest is soon disrupted, however, as the massive chain Jabberwock rises from a nearby building, destroying all of Pandora's chains in an instant as it proceeds to crush what remains of Reveal. Break suggests that he could use Mad Hatter again to destroy Jabberwock. Alice orders Gilbert to release her powers once again, though Oz objects that even Bee Rabbit doesn't have the strength to beat something as powerful as Jabberwock. Complying, Gilbert releases Alice's powers, allowing the transformed Alice to engage Jabberwock in battle. When Alice cuts into Jabberwock with her scythe, she receives fragments of her memories where Jack bid her farewell and told her that it was the last day he could come and play with her. Stunned by the revelation that Jabberwock held some of her memories, Alice unintentionally allows Jabberwock to get the upper hand, clasping Alice within his fist. Jabberwock then throws Alice into a building below, knocking her unconscious as he prepares to incinerate her with an energy beam. Seeing this, Oz runs as fast as he can and screams for Jabberwock to stop, a scream which the intention of the Abyss hears. Suddenly, Jabberwock is thrown back, roaring in pain as he fires his energy beam into the sky, his body turning to stone gradually as this happens. At the Vesalius Dukedom, Mrs. Kate rushes to Oz's side upon seeing him. Oscar reveals that, for the safety of the Vesalius Dukedom, Oz should take on the role of Duke Vesalius as soon as possible, the only problem being that his father disappeared with his contract to Griffon still intact. Oz is shocked to have learned that his father had a contract with the chain. Confirming this, Oscar elaborates that each of the four great dukes is meant to have a contract with their dukedom's respective black wing chain that guards their door to the abyss. With this, Oz asks what kind of chain Griffon is, making Oscar laugh as he reveals that Griffon has been right behind Oz all this time. Griffon is the same chain that was used to drop Oz into abyss during his coming of age ceremony, meaning that his father was acting as the lead Baskerville. The next morning, Oz explains that he wants to meet with the Baskervilles, as he'd like to see his father. 
Back at the Vesalius estate, as they prepare their carriage, Brake and Gilbert reveal to Oz that Pandora's investigations indicate that the stronghold of the Baskervilles is likely located within the ruins of Sabri. The next day, the group arrives in Sabri. As they move forward, though, the group is addressed by the Baskervilles, with Doug stating that they are on the road to the Abyss, while Fang claims that the power that Oz displayed during the chain invasion truly convinced his father that he needs to be judged and Lottie asks if Oz is looking to see Zai once again. The Baskervilles then appear before Oz, Alice, Gilbert, and Brake, saying that they will grant Oz his wish without haste. Lottie bids Oz farewell before she, Doug, and Fang clear the way for Oz, Alice, Gilbert, and Brake to get directly to Zai. Instead, however, Griffon emerges and summons the chains of condemnation to bind Oz, Alice, Gilbert, and Brake and start dragging them into the depths of the abyss. Just then, Oz calls out for Bee Rabbit, releasing Raven's seal on Alice's power by himself, destroying the chains of condemnation around them and allowing Alice to stop Griffon as he moves to crush them under his foot. What it seems as though Alice is losing the fight against Griffon, Oz screams her name, unlocking his powers once more and making Alice erupt with power then destroys the debris of Sabri in a powerful blast alongside Griffon himself. When the smoke clears, Alice has reverted to her human form, saying that it's Oz's strength that's providing her with power right now. Seeing his father in the distance, Oz moves ahead of the group, telling Zai that even though he's weak and riddled with faults, he will never stop moving forward. As Oz turns and leaves with the rest of the group, Zai's inner monologue reveals that even though it's never ideal to reject someone's existence, a being such as Oz can't be allowed to carry on existing or else. Now accepting everything as it is, Oz wants to rewrite the story as his own. But even if his time's limited, he's sure they'll be okay, because they're the authors after all. During the carriage ride home, Alice asks what will become of them once everything is all said and done, and they've managed to solve all the mysteries they've been faced with. Back at the mansion where the coming of age ceremony was held, Lassie can be heard playing as Jack's pocket watch sits wrapped around the grave in the tomb. The end. If you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more.